Hello everyone. I, Neha Dixit, going to explain you some fundamental concepts of FEA. Uh, this one is your uh, first student in your finite element analysis subject. First of all, we will see introduction. Finite element procedure are at presently widely used in engineering analysis. It is used to solve physical problems governed by a differential equation or energy theorem. But this method gives approximate solution. Physical problem is divided into small entities called elements. Each element is connected by nodes and a finite element mesh is obtained after assemblage of all elements. It is represented by a system of algebraic equation and it is solved for unknown of nodes. We will see in details in next lecture series uh, but uh, today I am going to explain some basic concept or total overview of uh, fundamental concepts of uh, finite element analysis. First of all, we will see difference between classical or analytical method and finite element method. There are many ways to solve any physical problem, but uh, like classical or analytical method and finite element method. So we will see first difference between the uh, classical and analytical method and finite element method. In classical or analytical method, exact equation are performed and exact solution are obtained while in finite element method that is in short FEM method, exact equation are formed but approximate solution are obtained. In classical method, solutions can be obtained for limited problems while in FEM, solutions can be obtained for all types of problems. In classical method, when material property is not isotropic, solution or problems become very difficult. While in FEM, it can handle structures with anisotropic with easy. In classical method, if structure consists of a more than one material, it is difficult to use classical method. In FEM, it can be used without any difficulty. Classical method or analytical method, problems with materials and geometry non-linearities cannot be handled easily. While in FEM, it can handle without any difficulty. Now, next is difference between the finite difference method and finite element method. There are two concepts that is the finite difference method and finite element method. Let's see the difference between two. It makes pointwise approximation to the governing equation. While in FEM, it makes piecewise approximation to the governing equation. In finite difference method, it does not give value at any point except at node points while in FEM it gives values at any point. Finite difference method not give any approximating function to evaluate basic values using the nodal values while FEM it considers the sloping boundaries exactly and curve boundaries too. Finite difference method it needs larger number of nodes while in FEM it needs fewer nodes. FDM that is finite difference method fairly handles complicated problem while FEM can handle all complicated Let's see some finite element terminologies. FEA that is finite element analysis in numerical technique to handle complex geometry, any material properties, any boundary conditions and any loading conditions. Mathematical model of any geometric model describes the behavior of a geometry by differential equation and boundary conditions. Mathematical models dividing the object of interest into finite number of elements and this process of dividing the body or structure into finite number of elements is known as the discretization. So what is happening here? Suppose any system is there and we are going to divide this system into number of elements and that number of dividing the number of elements that process is known as the discretization. If number of degree of freedom is finite then model is called as a continuous and discrete model when physical object is divided into the discrete parts then infinite degree of freedom is converted into the finite degree of freedom each part of discretized body is known as the element and every element has one or more nodes. In a picture, you can see that the discretized body, one body is divided into the number of elements and that elements are connected with the nodes. So, uh, suppose this square element is there and uh, element second is there and that uh, two elements, element one and two are interconnected with the nodes. So elements are connected to each other at these nodes. 
next is types of loads suppose any system is there then there should be uh, boundary conditions or loads are there acting on that body which type of loads acting on body or which type of boundary conditions present in that body let's see types of loads first one is body force denoted by small f it is the distributed force per unit volume is known as body force remember here it is distributed force per unit volume so small f is force body force in x direction body force in y direction and body force in z direction respectively that is fx fy and fz and transpose of it next is surface force surface force is distributed force per unit area is known as the surface force it is denoted by small s it is surface force in x direction y direction and z direction that is sx sy and sz and transpose of it next is point load i i is indicated for that particular point a load p acting at the point i is called as a point load pi is equal to px py pz and transpose of it that is the point load in x y and z direction respectively next is the boundary conditions boundary conditions are the variables that are specified at the boundaries of the problem or entity or field of interest Boundary conditions are classified in two forms. That is, the first one is homogeneous boundary conditions, which occurs when movement is prevented completely at any location, and second one is the non-homogeneous boundary condition, occurs when finite non-zero displacement values are specified. So, first boundary condition is displacement boundary condition, and also known as the geometric or essential boundary condition, or kinematic boundary condition this type of boundary condition prescribe displacements and slope let's see in this picture one cantilever beam is there and uh, p udl is acting on that so boundary condition at point a that is x is equal to 0 suppose length of that cantilever beam is l then at point a x is equal to 0 so displacement is equal to 0 because fixed support is there so there is no displacement so v is equal to 0 as at x is equal to 0 that is at point a displacement is 0 so slope is also 0 so dv by dx is also 0 so this type of boundary condition is known as the displacement boundary condition which defines the displacement at that particular point in further um, session we will see that without any displacement or uh, displacement boundary condition there uh, we cannot solve the any physical system so this type of boundary condition is also known as the essential boundary condition next boundary condition is surface loading boundary condition or force or natural boundary condition or static boundary condition which prescribes forces and moments we can see in the picture at uh, boundary condition at x is equal to l shear force is e into i into d cube v by dx cube is equal to 0 while bending moment is e into i into del square v by del x square is equal to 0 because uniform distributed load acting on that beam so um, if one system is given and you have to solve the uh, that system you have to um, you have to solve that system to get the displacement value, stresses, uh, or temperatures within that element. Then you need to solve that system with the help of finite element analysis. Then you need to uh, define some steps. So, so many of basic steps in finite element analysis. First one is discretization. We already seen that discretization is the divide the entity into the small number of uh, elements. Second one is the selection of approximation model. Uh, as what is the approximation model that system you have to convert into the some mathematical model then which mathematical model is generally selected polynomials are selected that is the u is equal to n into q q is the elemental displacement while n is the shape function next is define strain displacement and stress strain relation for that particular element we will see in next slide what is the strain displacement and strain stress relation next is derivation of elemental equation elemental equation is k into q is equal to f it is for only element element one element it is stiffness into nodal displacement is equal to nodal force next is assemble element equation to obtain global equation global equation is for 
total system suppose one system is there and you are dividing that system into the five parts then uh, combine all five elemental equation to form a global equation that is the capital k into capital q is equal to capital f next is application of boundary condition that boundary conditions may be essential or displacement boundary condition or surface or natural or force boundary conditions next is solution of modified global equation solved that equation polynomial equation and last and important step is interpretation of the result let's see the application of fem in various field static analysis of trusses beams frames and machine parts or structure stress analysis of pressure vessels flywheels crankshafts cams linkage gears etc analysis of potential flow free surface flow boundary layer flows viscous flow etc uh, we can see here first two uh, applications are uh, uh, related to mechanical engineering field while uh, third uh, third application is uh, related to fluid flow mechanics uh, stress analysis of bone and teeth load carrying capacity of implant and prosthetic system is the application regarding the medical field structural analysis in civil and aerospace engineering steady state temperature distribution in solids and fluids crack and fracture problems under dynamic loads transient behavior of electromagnetic mechanical devices analysis of casting forming welding and machining process and analysis of nuclear pressure vessels and nuclear reactor components etc and so uh, so on next topic is uh, meshing technique why do we carry out meshing first of all we will see what is meshing meshing is generally uh, when we are going to discretize body diet is we are dividing the number uh, one element into the number of small elements to convert the infinite degree of freedom into the finite degree of freedom but it is only discretization step you have to again assemble that elements to form one system so that there should be finite degree of freedom but one complete system is there then that uh, discretization plus assemblage is known as the meshing so why do we carry out meshing see here one system is there suppose and that system in that consider this part only this highlighted parts only in that number of points are infinite and degree of freedom per point is 6 so total number of equation is infinite into 6 so infinite equations should be there and you need to solve that infinite equation and it is impossible but what is happening in fem again in, uh, see in this figure number two we are going to divide this system into the elements and that elements elements form number of nodes eight and degree of freedom per node is six so total number of equation is eight into six 48 so you can easily solve that 48 equation again one point is here if you are going to increase the number of nodes that means you are increasing the element number suppose uh, uh, again i am going to de discretize or mesh this structure with the number of nodes 10 and degree of freedom per node is 6 so 10 into 6 60 equations are there so what is happening if a number of elements increases number of nodes increases degree of freedom per nodes is same and total number of equations are going to increases so your accuracy of that um, answer or of that analysis is get more to exact solution so any continuous object has infinite degree of freedom and it's just not possible to solve a problem in this format because total num number of equations are infinite so finite element method reduces degree of freedom from infinite to finite with the help of the discretization that is the meshing to form the with forming the elements so how to decide the element type element type selection is dependent upon the three factor first one is geometry size and shape which type of geometry is there and which type of shape of that geometry is there type of analysis uh, which type of analysis is there linear analysis thermal analysis or dynamic or impact analysis and uh, most important is time allotted for project because if you are increasing the element number degree of freedom and uh, equation uh, then your time for that uh, solving that system solving that analysis uh, it gets increases next is the mesh revision method i already uh, told you that if your increases the number of equations that means number of elements then uh, you can get the exact solution you can 
you are more close to exact solution so there are some mesh revision methods we will see mesh revision can provide improved results in the analysis the aim is to achieve necessary accuracy by adopting as many degree of freedom as possible the mesh revision involves refinement of coarse mesh coarse mesh you have to refine that coarse mesh with the help of edge refinement P refinement and R refinement. See what is the difference between the H refinement. H refinement H is for the linear dimension that characterizes the size of an element. H refinement consists of adding elements of same type. Size of element may be square root of area or cube root of area. See what is happening here. One one element is there, and I am going to refine this element. That means increases the number of elements by adding the elements of same time same time so here triangular element is there okay suppose degree of freedom per node is 6 and three nodes are there 3 into 6 18 equations should be there okay but what is i am doing mesh revision is doing so same type of element triangular elements are adding here so what is happening number of elements are changes from 1 to 3 while nodes are changes from 3 to 6 so 6 into 6 36 equations are there and you uh, you get more exact solution for this element okay and same this is for the square element also next is the p refinement p is the degree of highest complete polynomials in the element field quantity it increases degree of polynomial within the element without changing the number of elements now what is happening here in h refinement we are uh, changing the element numbers but while in p refinement we are changing the degree of polynomial we already seen that number of equations increases polynomials uh, sorry uh, you, you will get more accurate uh, you will get solution that is close to accurate solution also as when we are increasing the degree of polynomial your solution will also tends to exact solution so how polynomial degree can be increased this can be done in following ways adding dot to existing nodes adding nodes on the existing inter element boundaries and adding internal nodes so you can see in the first uh, second image uh, in this image four nodes are there in square element after p refinement i am adding internal nodes so element number is same only one element but degree is increases because there are more number of nodes from the element. and r refinement r is the rearranged it relocate nodes without changing the number of elements or polynomials of their field quantities now what is the difference between the two method difference between the two method lies in how these elements are treated h method uses many simple elements but number of elements are more while p method uses few complex elements now error in fem we already discussed that fem is the approximate solution uh, fem gets uh, from the fem we get approximate solution there are some errors that result uh, results obtained by fem contain error error leads to difference between fem result and exact solution of mathematical model in numerical analysis we can we make assumptions and because of that assumptions error uh, is there in fem procedure and such assumptions are prescribed geometry regarding prescribed geometry boundary conditions loads and material properties are compatible to the problem there is no error during data input we can assume that uh, so error lead uh, error are leading general type of element has been selected that should be uh, that that can be wrong uh, because of that error is proceed the numerical errors can be minimized by considering proper element types, proper element sizes and shapes, proper boundary conditions and constraints by applying process number less than infinite precision. Now, which type of errors occurs? Modeling errors, use errors, bugs, discretization error, truncation error, manipulation error, and numerical error. We can see in detail in uh, subsequent videos. Let's see the strain displacement equation. The state of strain in an elemental volume. So consider one elemental volume in that strain in x, y, z direction is there and also shear stress in x, y, y, z and x, z element is, x, z direction is there. Displacement is u, v, w. The strain displacement equation is this. Strain is equal to d into displacement. D is the matrix differential operator. So you can say that strain vector is equal to strain displacement matrix into 
movement vector. Next is the stress strain equation. Six different stress components are formed. The stress vector that is the sigma sigma in x y z direction and shear stress in x y y z and z direction. So stress vector is equal to stress strain matrix into the strain vector, and your matrix is like this. Next is in some cases what is happening? We are assuming that third dimensional three dimensional body as a two dimensional problem. Let's see the cases. In two dimensional problems are modeled as plane stress and plane strain. What is happening in plane stress? Consider a very thin body. This condition is characteristic by very small dimension in one direction or normal direction. A thin planar body subject to in plane loading on its edge surface is said to be plane stress. So in this condition is stresses in that direction is zero. So sigma z and tau in y z and z x is equal to zero. There is a no stress component where is across the thickness for this condition. So your stress strain relation is modified as like this. Next is a plane strain problem. Problems involving a long body whose geometry and loading do not vary significantly in longitudinal direction are referred as a plane strain problem. In that consider a long cylinder body. So in such a case, strain components is equal to zero. So epsilon z and shear strain in y z and z x direction is equal to zero. So simple is a plane stress problem. Consider a thin body and loads acting on that direction. So stress is equal to uh, stresses in that direction is zero. While in strain body, consider long cylinder body and strains are equal to zero in that direction. So your stress strain relation modified as for the plane stress problem like this. Let's see some advantages of ATM. ATM can deal with a complex material model such as homogeneous, heterogeneous, isotropic and non-linear models also. Any complex geometry can be analyzed. Any type of boundary conditions can be accommodated in ATM. No linearity, time dependent problems and any arbitrary loading conditions can be handled easily. ATM can be used for any type of physical problems, finite element formulation and development of codes. The formulation and developed codes for one class can be used for other class of problem with the little modification and softwares are available with affordable price. But there are some disadvantages of ATM which are parametric study is difficult as finite element method cannot provide close form situation. Skilled user, reliable program and computers are essential. Many input data are required and voluminous output needs to be stored and analyzed. To define a good model experience, an engineering judgment is required and a general purpose program has extensive documentation which cannot be. These are the some basic concepts regarding the finite element analysis. Thank you for the listening.